So it's no time to talk about the characters in the book. Now there are some um, major characters that are very important for the story. There are also some minor characters that I might not discuss. Um, so if you feel like I've missed one and you want to know more about those particular characters, let me know in the comments and I will give you a written response to, those, to that question. And I might even talk about those characters in the comments as well. So check out the comments for more information on characters if you miss one of them. Now, the first and most important character in the book is Star Carter. Now, Star is called Star because Maverick um, thinks that she was her star in dark times. And she acts as a star throughout the story. She testifies against 115, she talks about King and the violence in Garden Heights openly on television, and she speaks up during one of those riots. Now, Star is a typical 16-year-old girl, and it's very unfortunate what she has to go through. She has a boyfriend, Chris, and she goes to schools to Wilkinson High. She lives in Garden Heights, which can be considered kind of like a hood. And what's very interesting is that On the Come Up, which is the sequel to this book, also takes place in Garden Heights, and that the main character of this book actually talks about Star several times. Very interesting. Now more on Star. She goes to a different school than the place that she lives in, Wilkinson High. And this is very important to the story, because as we read the book, we find out that we actually have two different stars. We have Star at Wilkinson, and we have Star in Garden Heights. And Wilkinson Star is a typical black girl, in the sense that she is the, one of the cool ones, because she's one of the two black people at the entire school, and that makes her automatically very popular, that makes her uh, funny, that makes that she has lots of friends, um, and everybody likes her. And then we have the star in Garden Heights, who is, of course, a different type of star. She um, has friends in Garden Heights. They do Garden Heights-like stuff. Um, they play basketball. They um, go to parties sometimes. And she has different friends in Garden Heights. We have Kenya um, as a best friend in Garden Heights to her friends in Wilkinson, where she has Maya and Haley, and also her boyfriend. Now, there's one moment in the book where Star tries to put the two worlds together and she talks about this um, quite elaborately. Because at some point, when she was younger, she invited Haley and Maya over to Garden Heights and so that they can have a sleepover. However, that night there was a shooting and the children were so afraid that they called their parents and had to pick them up. And that was the moment when Star realized that she can't really have these two worlds together. It's either one in Garden Heights and one in Wilkinson or none of them. She can only have two worlds, her Garden Heights world and her uh, Wilkinson High world. So we have two different stars and they don't really interact. The thing is that even her boyfriend, Chris, is only part of her Wilkinson life. And because he lives in the same neighborhood as Uncle Carlos, she's able to visit him and he's able to visit Uncle Carlos's house. So he's never been in the hood and they don't really know anything about Garden Heights at Wilkinson High. Now Star really likes um, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and she compares her own life to that of Will. Because there is some sort of overlap, I think. Um, Will was also taken from West Philadelphia, born and raised on a playground. And then he had to go back to Bel-Air to live with his uncle, which is a completely different world than the world that he was raised in. So there is a difference and there is some overlap um, <clears throat> so there is a bit of overlap between Star and uh, Will Smith in The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Now two other very important characters are Star's parents. And they are important because they support Star a lot. First we have Star's mother who is Lisa. And Lisa works at the hospital. She's the um, sister of Uncle Carlos, the police officer. Now Lisa is Star's mother but also Shekani's mother. And she's the stepmother to Seven. Now, Seven is the result of a breakup between Maverick and uh, Lisa because he went to Isha and had a sleepover, if you like, and as such, Seven was born. Lisa loves Seven and she cares for him as if he is her own uh, kid. She tries to protect her children a lot and she wants to move out of Garden Heights, but Maverick does not want to move out of Garden Heights. And he doesn't want to move because he feels that he can help these community more if he stays in Garden Heights. Lisa even pushes the children not to go towards activism, but unfortunately Maverick is a stronger force here and Star ends up being the activist herself. Now Maverick is a different person. 
Maverick was one of the King Lords. At some point, he even took the blame for King and he went to prison. And this is the moment where Uncle Carlos comes in and takes care of the children and Lisa while Lisa has to work and go to school. Now Maverick, who's also known as Big Mav, feels that the police are going to do everything to twist Star's words. Now an interesting detail about Maverick is that he loves and takes care of his roses. And these roses kind of represent his values and his devotion towards Star. Now our friends at Sparknotes claim that Angie Thomas th chose for roses because of the reference to the Tupac song, The Rose That Grew From Concrete. And we know more about Star a Maverick story because of this third um, iteration, if you like, in this series. It's kind of a prequel, Concrete Rose, that talks about uh, Maverick and Maverick's life and where he came from. Um, interesting, very good book to read. If you want to know more about this book or when I put the videos out, don't forget to subscribe. Now Maverick religiously follows the Black Panthers and he even has his children pray the Ten Commandments from the Black Panthers as if it's gospel. And he really feels that he needs to fight for a better world for his children. At some point he even explains what Thug Life actually means to Star, but that's for the Thug Life video. Star also has a brother, Shekani, and a half-brother, Seven, who's also the half-brother of Kenya, who's also a friend of uh, Star. And then we obviously need to talk about Khalil. Now, Khalil is only alive at the beginning of the book and he gets shot there, obviously. And Khalil, we know a lot about Khalil. We can fill in lots of the blanks because he talks about his life and we learn about his life during the rest of the book. Now, one thing we know about Khalil is that his mother, Brenda, is addicted to drugs. And drugs play kind of an important role in this book and also in On the Come Up, um, where we see that drugs really ruin the lives of these people. Um, they've ruined the life of Brenda, who hasn't been able to say goodbye to her, her kid and who kind of gets an extra breakdown as soon as she finds out that Khalil has been shot. Khalil lived with his grandmother, whom he take, took care of and um, for whom he had to work. And Khalil's grandmother is called Miss Rosalie. Now, Miss Rosalie is like a grandmother to Star as well because she raised Star because when her mother was at school and she wasn't able to uh, look after them, she went to Khalil and played with Khalil and Miss Rosalie would look after them um, so while Lisa was at school. Now, here are some other characters that are also um, important and also related to Star. First of all, we have Natasha, which is one of Star's friends who got killed when she was younger, the one that got killed in the drive-by shooting. We have Haley Grant, one of Star's friends at um, Wilkinson High, and she's the one that is considered the racist one. She's definitely brought up in a white neighborhood with white, well-suited um, well parents who have a lot of money, they can go to the Bahamas, and they complain about, she complains about the fact that they had to go to the Bahamas again um, in front of Star. And um, they have been friends ever since Star was a kid. Then we also have Maya Lang. And Maya is one of Star's other friends. She's a Chinese girl and her mother is a doctor. And Maya also lives in the suburbs. So she has a very big house and she has a PlayStation. And they go over several times in the book to play PlayStation at Maya's house. Now Maya is also one of them who has encountered one of those racist remarks from Haley Because when Maya was celebrating her, I don't know, sixth or seventh birthday. Um, there was in, she was invited together with Star and they were talking about Thanksgiving dinner and Haley racistly said that um, she doesn't want to eat at Maya's house because then they would eat cat or dog or something. So she, she made a racist remark re regarding Asian food. And when they confront Haley with these remarks together with the um, fried chicken incident, Haley kind of claims that everything were just jokes and that they're very sensitive and that everything is racist when it comes to them. And she doesn't really like that. So this is one of the moments where even Maya and Haley break up their friendship. Another very important character is Uncle Carlos, who is Lisa's brother. Now, he's a detective and he's married to a doctor. And um, he makes a very important claim when it comes to all these killings. Now, remember, he is a police officer. He lives in the suburbs. He has a good salary. And you can even consider him a bit white, but that's probably a very dangerous thing to say. At least Maverick considers him to be white. He doesn't consider him a real black person because he's left Garden Heights and he lives in the suburb and has a good life. Um, so Uncle Carlos took care of the children while Maverick was in prison. And when Maverick and Uncle Carlos have this discussion, Uncle Carlos says that other races aren't killing us as much as we're killing ourselves. 
So instead of making the claim that other people, in this case white people, are killing the black people, he makes the claim that black people are killing each other as well. And I think this is a very important claim he makes, because of course that is true and we see that in the book with all of these shootings. Now Uncle Carlos later takes in Devante, which is one of um, Star's friends in Garden Heights, and you know, Devante escapes, if you like, and he, he starts selling drugs again, but Uncle Carlos does offer him a second chance later in the book. Then we also need to talk about Chris, and Chris is Star's white boyfriend. Again, he is very white. And this is a problem, because Star has been raised by Maverick, who believes that if you get a white um, boyfriend, if she would get a white boyfriend, she would betray her own roots and her own heritage. And he believes that if she would get a white boyfriend, she would not believe that he was a good father because then she's looking for someone who is different than he is and from a completely different race. Now we know that this is not the case and that Chris is actually a very good boyfriend. And the only thing he actually did was assume that they were going to have sex and bring a condom, but I think she was able to forgive him for this later on in the book as well. Then we also need to talk about 115. And 115 is the police officer who shot Khalil. His official name is Brian Cruz, but his real name isn't used in the book a lot. And I think this is done deliberately to illustrate that he wasn't shot by a particular person, but by the system. So it's kind of a, he represents the police violence system. Then we also need to talk about King. And King is the leader of the King Lords, one of the gangs and drug gangs in Garden Heights. And there are other gangs as well. We have the Garden Disciples, for example, who are... Um, one of those other gangs in Garden Heights, and King is the leader of the King Lords. Now remember, King was one of Maverick's friends, and we even read about King in Concrete Rose. Very interesting. Um, and they were so friends that even Maverick took the blame for King. Now King is a very mean person, but he's very wealthy because he sells drugs, but then he lives in the hood, which is interesting. Um, he's also Kenya's father, so Kenya and Star are friends, so in the end, you know, it's kind of ironic that the, the daughters become friends and the fathers were friends at some point as well. Now, King is, of course, the leader of the gang, and I don't know whether he's killed anyone himself, but, you know, he has others killing people for him. Um, and I wonder what happened with the King Lords after he went to prison, because we don't read about the King Lords in On the Come Up, so that's very interesting to think about. So there are probably other characters in the book as well, and I might have skipped a few. So if you want to know more about another character or what I think of a character, let me know in the comments and I will elaborate on those characters. <laughs>